Hi, my name is Tunji Williams. I'm the host of Black Founder Hour. On this episode of Black Founder Hour, I have the unique privilege of interviewing Pamela Adams. Pamela is a Georgetown trained lawyer, former practicing intellectual property lawyer, who left that life entirely to become a doula. Today she's a world-class doula with a growing doula business based in Baltimore, Maryland. And I get to chat with Pamela, Pam rather, about what it means uh, to leave your life behind as you know it and uh, turn and lean into a brand new career doing something completely different uh, and building a business from scratch while at it. This is a really wonderful conversation. Uh, really proud of this interview. Um, there's an added bonus that Pam also happens to be my sister-in-law, though more like a sister. So I really hope you enjoy this episode. Hey, Pam. Hey, Tanji. <laughs> All right. Um, thank you for doing this. I appreciate it. Um, I know you're you're busy mother of two, including mother and the newborn. Yeah. Um, so thanks for making the time. We normally do these in the morning, but we had to make uh, make sure that we could get get you in the evening uh, when you have like a, a little bit of a break. So thanks. Yeah, I appreciate that. So, so where are you? Where are you right now? Physically? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, we'll, we'll get to that. Really we'll get to that. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm here in our bedroom in our house in Baltimore. Um, sometimes I work in the office, but I just have been feeling more comfortable in the bedroom these days. So hmm. here I am. I'm not going to do the pan around to the like <laughs> table and baskets of laundry. <laughs> we'll, we'll trust you. We'll take your word for it. Um, okay. So you said you've been feeling more, sometimes you'll work in the office, but lately you've been working in, in the bedroom or just living more in the bedroom. Yeah. I guess, you know, that's postpartum life, um, is just living in the bedroom because it's like, I don't have a baby next to me right now, but, um, yeah, pretty much we've been posted up in the bedroom, like not the whole time, but I just work in here a lot more now. Um, cause frequently this is a rare case since we're recorded that I thought we might not want um, the background noise, but frequently, usually when I'm on calls, it'll be like, I have Adder with me right here. And then I like gently want to like lay him down directly next to me on the bed and I keep working or I'm working in the morning while he's like asleep next to me. Yeah. The, the joys of balancing like motherhood and the other parts of your life. I, like, I'm just getting an appreciation for it now, like, you know, 11 months in with Rosie. It's not easy at all. Like, like it's not easy, period. But I, um, I almost hesitate to say it's not easy because on the other hand, I feel like I have, um, really grown into myself a lot more since becoming a parent like I don't feel like I'm it's this weird paradox of like um I don't feel like I've lost myself at all I feel like I'm really like much more in line with myself and really like coming into a full expression of myself since becoming a parent because of becoming a parent but also I have to like fight for that time for me and fight for those like boundaries um, of where I can be just an individual or a business owner or an artist without also being, or without just being like mom. So if I guess fight implies like opposition or something on the other side of your fourth, like what, what are you fighting against like, for you that? You know how it is. It's like, um, <sighs> To some extent, this type of distinction happened even just getting into a serious relationship, especially once we moved in together. But like, there's just no time where I just happen to have time anymore. Like you don't just happen to have time if you have a family, like yeah. if you have anything you wanna do, you have to make time. Um, and it can be hard because the more people there are, the more full and like beautiful, but full our life becomes the more things are competing for that time. So 
um yeah i guess mm -hmm. it sometimes feels like a fight right now but you could also say just like really prioritize but like really prioritize <laughs> you can't leave <laughs> and there is a difference between like writing it on a list and really prioritizing it yeah or like being like oh i would like to do this um it has to be like okay no like when are we gonna each have time for ourselves when are we gonna have time like for ourselves by ourselves when are we gonna have time for ourselves as couples when are we gonna have time to work when are we gonna have time to play like if we don't plan out like okay saturday from 10 to noon that's your time then it's not it's not gonna okay. happen. Yeah. yeah that's the default Pam, okay, we're getting into one of our discussions. Um, I want to back up because in this this time there are people listening, um, and you're on Black Founder Hour. Uh, so let me back up a little bit and let me let me be real and explain kind of how this came to be. So, Pam, you are my I my sister. It's how I feel, but you're my sister in law um, by my marriage to your your younger sister Victoria. And, you know, we've, we've become close over the years as I dated Victoria and now as we're married. Um, and as I was trying to put together this season one, I was thinking about founders I know that are doing phenomenal things in the world. And there was no way I could do a season one. I didn't want to include somebody from the family, but there, there's no way I could do a season one without having you on to talk about your, your journey as a person, as a founder, and as the CEO of, of Cosmic. Um, but... Beyond that preface, just tell us a little bit. We were talking about self. Who who is Pam Adams? What is what is what is self for you? I know that's a lot, but go there. Okay, so in no particular order. Um, yeah, I'm a black woman. I'm a mother, a partner, a birth worker an artist, a poet, and a witch. And a licensed <laughs> attorney. I'm less excited about that, but I also feel like it might be helpful sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I, won't, I won't ask why. I think that's for another show. Why um, I'm less excited or why I feel like it might be helpful? Why you feel like it might be helpful. I'm oh, I, you know what? I was imagining, um, like, it might... <sighs> So when I say it might be helpful, I mean that like when I think about my birth work, as much as I'm passionate and I feel called to work with families and individuals um, on that scale, I feel like there also really needs to be systemic work um, done. And there are things like Christy, our other sister, I don't know if you saw this, but she just put a, like put a zine out on Instagram the other day of like everyday small radical abolitionist acts that you can take so um there are those everyday small radical acts that you can take towards dismantling oppressive systems but also um if you have access to that system which like a lot agree um provides i think that that can be helpful and the two might need to work simultaneously so that's what i meant but also i mean you're an attorney so you have plenty of people but if you ever get arrested you can also call me if that's <laughs> I'm, I'm hoping those days are past me but i will remember that yeah. um and but i mean i guess you 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 list out a bunch of things which is actually a pretty incredible an eclectic list of things to be um but i guess I want to know beyond the titles, beyond the stories you and others have told you about who you are. Yeah. Who who are you? What's your constitution? What's your how would you describe your your essence? I on your website, your clients describe you, you know, yeah. and the impact you have on them. But like, how do you describe your your essence? It's funny because it's hard to sometimes um, distinguish between like, like who, who am I for real and what do I put on my like, what would I, if I had one, like put on my Tinder profile, you know, like yeah. how do I present? Cause I'm, <laughs> I want to be like, yeah, I'm, I'm a mysterious badass, like <laughs> obvious, like, right. Um, 
even though people are always like, oh, you're so nurturing and like caring and things that to me feel like not like a mysterious badass. Um, But I'm an introvert. I'm an artist, like that is core to me. And like those things that I listed, I think a lot of them can be summed up in me being an artist and a creator. And also those things that do not immediately sound like being an artist, um, that's the lens through which I do them. So that is core to me. Mm. I'm an introvert, that's probably core to me. I'm a rebel. Decidedly or by nature, a rebel? I think both. I think Mm. both. Um, It's hard to say, like, it's kind of a nurture versus nature question because, as you know, I was raised by a rebel as well. Um, (laughs) But two, I might say. Yeah. um, (laughs) Yeah, in ways. But um, yeah, so it's hard to say. But I think that I was like, we were just talking about this recently. I was like raised with kind of core values of like um, independent thought and self-expression. And I have adopted those and doubled down on them, you know? Hmm. Um, So I think both. I want to get into the the whys of that because I think that's crucial to understanding you as a a person and as, as an entrepreneur, I'm sure. Yeah. Though, what I do want to do for everybody else's sake, because I, I feel us already going down our rabbit hole, um, is just, can you tell, this is Black Founder Hour after all, and it's a show where we, you know, have interesting, hopefully interesting conversations with, you know, dynamic and incredible founders that the world doesn't know yet that, I, that I'm sure the world will know, invariably. Um, so, can you kind of just explain to us your business, like what is it you do? Which, what is it, that, what, what value do you provide to the world for your business? So I'm a birth worker, I'm a doula and a childbirth educator. Those are the two key, like um, biggest things, but amongst other things. Um, so just for people who don't know, a doula is somebody who provides basically support to people in labor. Um, It's not just in labor. I usually try to build as much rapport as possible with people prenatally, with families prenatally. (laughs) Um, And it involves um, informational support, physical support, um, emotional support, spiritual support during the whole process of from whenever they hire me until they give birth and then at least a couple of weeks after they give birth. <clears throat> um, at a core, my role in labor is really kind of just to hold space for people mm-hmm. to have that experience. Um, and My work as a childbirth educator plays into this as well. So I teach um, childbirth instruction and sometimes it's the, it's, you know, my students in my classes are people who I'm not their birth doula or vice versa. And ideally I love it when they're both because then I get to know them really well and I dig deep with them. And then hopefully they go into their birth feeling really comfortable with me and I know them and know how to support them and know what, um, like, just who they are, what things are, like, triggering for them, what, like, their, like, foundational beliefs are, what are, what things are important to them, um, because it's a really intimate experience, but in a nutshell, that's what I do, um, I kind of think of myself as like um, I think I say this a lot, but um, it's this interesting thing because birth work is just such ancient and sacred work 
birth is as old as humans, right? <laughs> um, yeah. It's like deeply natural and ancient. And then also we live in this modern society with, you know, modern medicine, which in many ways is a gift. Um, like we know how to deal with things that at one point would have been dangerous that don't necessarily have to be dangerous. But also there's this like um, serious disconnect from nature um, and um, I think a lot of people feel like a tension between being or f at least feeling reliant on that system but also feeling like this this feeling like it's it's disconnected from nature and they are giving up some of this like earthy sacredness of this experience by um, needing to be reliant on it. And then also, especially in the case of black parents, that they're reliant on the system and it's maybe even unsafe. Yep. So, um, <clears throat> so there's this balance in like preparing people and supporting them and mentoring them through the process where it's like, okay, so of, of course you need to have like modern medical information to navigate this system, but also that's not the whole story. So um, bringing a little bit of the rest of that into it and helping them connect to it. Um, it's not like I'm like here, like without me, like you wouldn't have your sacred experience, but like I'm somebody who has walked this path ahead of them, just a little bit ahead of them. Um, and also who has a fair amount of training and put a lot of thought into this um, and has some special skills that can kind of help them um, reconnect. Hmm. I, I don't think of my job. <laughs> no, I don't. I, I don't think you could have put put it more honestly. Let's say let's say it this way. I don't think you could have said it in a way that's closer to the the truth as I perceived it because you were our doula. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and that my the way you the birth ever. Look at that. Yeah, and you did a great job. And um, I think I, I got to be honest. I got to level with you. You already know this about me. Like, I think although the way we see the world uh, vibrates in many ways on the same wavelength, I think like the constructs we're used to describing things in, the terms we're used to describing things in are different. So like when we got to the point where we were considering whether we want to, you know, have a doula period and then work with you. Like I, I had fears because growing up, like, you know, I grew up in a traditional Nigerian household where, you know, basically you just do things conservatively. Yeah. Um, and, you know, there's, 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 there's scriptural and Christian basis to the way you live your life. And the doula as a concept is outside of what I know. Sure. And for me, the, the struggle was that it wasn't oppositional in any way to anything I learned but it, it wasn't included. Mm -hmm. Do you do you serve as a doula people like me? And like, what approach do you take to kind of easing us in to the benefit you're offering? So my, okay, let me back up before I go into that. I think a lot okay. of people have that feeling that you have. I think there's this perception that um, doulas are like, crunchy which i am right and a lot of, like um and a lot of us are but that they're for like um crunchy affluent white women who want to have unmedicated births yep um but on the other but but that's really not just who we're for or and I mean my primary like mission is to serve the black community um, and those people might even be the people who like the affluent white women 
might be the people who need a doula the least, even though they still do, they still do. Cause it's not like, um, there's just an inherent, um, like imbalance of, um, like power and authority when you're in a patient, uh, doctor relationship. So everybody I think kind of needs that somebody to help level that out. But anyway, there's definitely that perception. So I'm not at all surprised to hear that. My approach is, um, I'm very like, I really go out of my way to really just be myself. Um, when I'm presenting myself in this work, it's different than other professions where like, um, you know, as a lawyer, if I'm meeting a client, they don't know my whole life. They don't know like my vibe. I'm talking about work, but with this, it's very personal work. And um, I, so I just make a point to show up as myself. So if you like read my website, it's very much like I'm not beating around the bush. I'm like not trying to like be everything to everybody. Um, and if I talk to you, I'm probably going to reference like, um, I'm going to say like sacred and spiritual. I'm going to reference energy work. Like, um, so I just really have a trust that if people, I, I'm putting myself out there as I am. And if people are into that and want to work for, with me, then I trust that I'm like the person for them. So the answer is kind of like, yes and no. Do I work with people like you? Um, yeah, I do. And I'm really happy to. Um, and a lot of it is also like, it, when we say like, like you, it's like, oh, like, what do we mean by that? Like, yeah, sure. like, with like personal style like you, but who are willing to like go deep and be vulnerable. Cause like, that's my type of person, you know? Um, even if I wouldn't like recognize you at a glance like that's who I'm trying to work with um so I mean essentially people who are interested in working with me like are already kind of apparently comfortable with some stuff and it could be it sometimes happens that like you're a special case because I I know you, right? Like it's sometimes, but it does sometimes happen that maybe like one partner, maybe like the birthing parent is like, ooh, this is my vibe. And then the partner is like, I don't really get like crystals and stuff, but it's her body and she felt comfortable with this. So I'm like along for the ride. That's cool with me. I'm down with that. Um, how do I work with people? Like, I don't even, I don't really see it as a barrier. Like I'm very much, um, I, it's, it's your experience. Like, this is not like a me centered experience. Like people are like giving birth. It's a huge deal in their life. So, um, I'm really just here to support you. That being said, my methods you, you might feel more or less comfortable with um, or be more or less familiar with um, depending on your experience up until this point. So for some people, if I'm like, okay, let's close with a meditation, they're like, great, we practice together every morning. Um, <laughs> or some people are like, I don't do that. I don't really feel comfortable with this. Like, um, And it's just a matter of like, I just really try to create a safe space and build a rapport with people and also normalize those feelings because even if you are like so crunchy and like you also are on a free form lock journey and we met at the farmer's market, right? <laughs> like even if you like appear to be that vibe, that doesn't make it any less uncomfortable to go deep and be vulnerable. Like you're more comfortable in the like small talk setting maybe, but like it's uncomfortable to go deep. Um, so I just, I try to make it feel as safe as possible and to build the rapport where people, and also, I mean, with everybody, I try to explain 
I know this might seem a little weird, but like this is the benefits. This is why we do this um, so that there's a little bit of buy-in that helps people be willing to go there with me. Um, some things like it also, um, like I might have guesses about like, I don't know, different people have different things that birth brings up a lot of just core things for people. So things that are difficult for you, it might come up in birth. Um, so if somebody is feeling like, oh, like, like you said, like we do things ourselves, hiring a doula, that's already kind of out of inside my comfort zone. Like that's, there's nothing wrong with that. That's really useful information for me to have. If somebody expresses that to me, I'm not like, oh, uh, like, how's this going to work? I'm like, oh, that's great information. So point. Yeah. we can like um, practice together. Like what's a really small, um, low stakes way that you can start just building or flexing that muscle of asking for and accepting help, you know? Because like, that's a skill that you need during birth and that you will continue to need as a parent. Hmm. I should have expected a thorough answer from a, a, pat, a former patent attorney. I'm such a chatterbox. They're all going to be thorough answers. You're going to have three questions in this. <laughs> I, I'm also trying to create a segue, I guess, to the next question, which is, um, I suppose you seem to have a strong sense of self, really strong. And I think for most people for whom that's not an act, that's hard one. Um, and you made a really bold career decision. Yeah. And to come out of a very cushy position and career trajectory and kind of like a family legacy, honestly, in the line of work to do what you're doing. Um, what was that all about? And how did you get there? Dude, so I guess <laughs> it all <laughs> probably started when, let me back up. So yeah, I was practicing intellectual property law, fourth generation patent professional. Um, and that's cool. Like, I never was passionate about it, but I liked it. And it was challenging. It made good money. It had the potential to make really good money. Um, I liked the people I worked with. Like, it pretty much checked every single box except for I love this, right? Hmm. Um, and... For a while, that was enough for me, and I felt like that was enough. I, I would even say stuff like, listen, I don't need to be passionate about my job. I'm passionate about my life outside my job, and my job facilitates that, so great. I remember that. I remember those conversations. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I thought that. Um, yeah. and, and for a while, I guess that was true. Um, this is like... I keep having urges to mention my astrology during this conversation and <laughs> it's like the fifth time that I've had the urge, but this time I'll go ahead and, and, um, and mention it. Indulge um, yourself. Yeah. I'll indulge myself. So <laughs> first of all, I'll say I'm Aquarius. So that explains the, like the rebellion, right? Um, <laughs> and I'm a Taurus rising and I like stability, like as much as I'm a rebellion and I need space and freedom, like I like stability and so for a while, like that type of job really met that need. Um, and then I guess I had a kid and giving birth is a transformative experience. And um, for everybody, I think, but that doesn't mean everybody changes their careers, but you kind of don't emerge from it the same as you were before. And when I say giving birth, I mean um, becoming a parent. So not just even physically giving birth, but becoming a parent tends to be a transformative experience that changes people, right? <clears throat> and it certainly was for me. Um, 
And at that same time, there was just a lot of personal stuff going on. Like things were shifting at my job. Things were shifting personally. There were things in um, our family going on. And it was this combination of um, all of a sudden realizing that you can never really have stability. Like you, there's nothing, not you can't have stability because actually I do feel like I have a very stable foundation um, even with career changes. And maybe that's something that like, I feel like that's something that maybe you can relate to as an entrepreneur because you have like your foundation and your, you have your family, you have your partner, you have your faith, you have your like financial planning, right? Um, yep. And it makes it less scary and irresponsible seeming to like, be flexible or like agile with your job. You um, risk it a little bit. Yeah. So like I do have stability, but all of a sudden I really realized like there is nothing you can do that will protect you from change. Like there's just not, like there's no job, no matter how stable that you're going to get it. And you know, you're going to keep it for 35 years, especially these days. So, yeah. You know, it's less and less common. Like, just because you get married doesn't mean you'll stay married. Like, you know, I'm happily married. But like, for example, any of these things that we do that feel permanent, there's nothing that can guarantee it's permanent. So to quote um, Octavia Butler, as I learned from Adrian Marie Brown, like, um, God is change, right? God is change. Um, I can't remember the rest of the quote. It's <laughs> like, everything that you change changes you. Um, the only living truth is change. We mm -hmm. can go back and like, like, that's enough for somebody to Google it and find the real quote. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Plus it all, it, it all comes through from that. But, but yeah, God has changed. The only living truth is change. That's a direct quote. And it's, it's true. So then all of a sudden it's like, okay, so if this isn't actually going to protect me from change, that's the main thing that I was getting out of it, then it's not really good enough. You know, like if I, if nothing is going to give me that like foolproof sense of security, then I may as well do what I want to do. Mm -hmm. There was also something that like, I think having a kid, it's like these days um, with this like post adolescent young adult phase, I feel like leaving the nest is kind of a gradual process. And that was like the last thing in that process for me where it was like, okay, for real, like this is my um, new little nucleus. Um, and that that made a difference um where i think it helped me be a little bit less concerned about other people's opinions um all of a sudden i kind of i had this realization that like what i do the choices i make in life really don't matter to anybody else they don't matter people <laughs> act like they matter they'll give you a lot of pressure but it's your life it's not going to affect anybody like if you quit your job today and don't give them any notice, it's like, yeah, that's bad form. Sure, maybe they'll scramble for a week. They'll replace you. The job's not going to fall apart, right? Yeah. Um, especially if you do it well. Like, especially if you're like, hopefully you have systems because we could all die tomorrow, right? Like, hopefully you're not setting up situations where things will fall apart without you. But so it just doesn't matter. It's like my life choices affect me and maybe mm -hmm. my partner and kids but still not always um and so that kind of gave me a sense of freedom and also it was just having a kid all of a sudden it was like this is the thing taking me away from my baby and I don't mm -hmm. even love it and therefore <laughs> I hate it <laughs> it just <laughs> wasn't enough anymore there's actually another quote that I think really sums it up well but I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to find it really quickly um no rush but I think let me I think I have it somewhere um
Silence is okay. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, okay. So yeah, there's a quote that I like wrote it down because it resonated with me so much on this experience, but it's a quote from Audre Lorde, of course, right? Um, which I discovered in the book, Pleasure Activism by Adrienne Marie Brown, of course, like hashtag, <laughs> if you know, you know. Um, <laughs> but the quote goes, once we begin to feel deeply all the aspects of our lives, we began to demand from ourselves and from our life pursuits that they feel in accordance with that joy, which we know ourselves to be capable of. Mm. Right? Um, it says, our erotic knowledge empowers us, becomes a lens through which we scrutinize all aspects of our existence, forcing us to evaluate those aspects honestly in terms of their relative meaning within our lives. And this grave, this is a grave responsibility projected from within each of us, not to settle for the convenient, the shoddy, the conventionally expected, nor the merely safe. And I think that pretty much sums it up. <laughs> Some people just have a way with words. I I'd argue you're one of those people. Um, I have a question and it goes back to, I suppose, your response to my first question, which is, where are you? today yeah <laughs> you gave me you asked me physically and i guess now i just want to open up space for you to answer where you might be in other ways today so every year i have a word of the year for myself instead of like a new year's resolution i have like a word that feels like a theme that's been coming up for me a lesson that i i um I'm hoping to go deeper with in the year. And this year is embody. Mm -hmm. um, and so where I am right now is kind of trying to really live and express these beliefs in like a physical way and integrate them within my life. This is something that's coming up for me a lot right now. So, um, you know, I'm a birth worker, I'm an artist, I said all those things. I'm primarily like during the day a stay-at-home parent. So I'm with our little kids all day and I'm working in the evenings and weekends or early mornings sometimes or whenever. Um, and I'm really interested in um, integrating those different aspects. Like how can I feel like myself as an artist and um, like explore pleasure and creativity in all aspects of my life? Instead of this feeling like when I was saying earlier of like having to like fight for that time and space, I really have that feeling of, um, oh, like I need, um, I need like time to myself in order to create, despite the fact that as I just described, like having kids and spending time with our kids has really created this like awakening in me that has like led to this business and so much creation. Like I've been, I've made so much art over the past three years. I started writing music. I started writing poetry. Like, um, I didn't even do that before I had them. Like I played a little bit of music, but I like my creativity has like, it's been so expansive. Um, and so like, how can I really like integrate that and like be aware of that in the moment? Like be my individual self that's not just limited to being a mom and be like in that place of wonder and awe and pleasure and creativity, like in the midst of um, beautiful and yet like exhausting and chaotic and like often mundane um, life with family, which a lot of it is like, um, I mean, it's so full of like love and creativity, but a lot of it is also like, um, washing diapers and, um, putting on the TV for the kids because I just need a break, like, um, and <laughs> messy kitchen that's not like the vibes, you know, that I picture, um, 
So that's where I'm at right now is exploring like how those things, um, how the separation between those things is an illusion and hmm. to, like integrate them. And I've got a couple of directions I'd love to go with that. I'm gonna start here. And for me, in my personal journey, in that integration step, that phase, comes before true authentic expression, whether that's in art or just in like interpersonal relationships, until I'm able to kind of decompartmentalize the elements of me and make them each a part of one another, I found it very difficult to express myself truthfully in any part because I was always kind of keeping the other parts outside the room. Like I didn't, they were trying to get in through the door and I'm like, no, this is my, this is my lawyer self. Don't, don't, mm -hmm. don't bring that, you know, fluid creative thinker in here. You're going to, you're going to expose us all kind of thing. You're going to expose us all. Yeah, <laughs> like that. Um, yeah, that is interesting. I mean, in reality, like, I feel like that, is totally the case and that's already kind of like it's I think I'm late to catch up to it like that's happening like um and that influence from the different things that I do is bleeding into the other areas and inspiring them and like fertilizing them but I'm like catching up with my mindset um Yeah, I'm just thinking about what you said, but yeah. And I know I didn't mean to take you off course, it's just what you said uh, resonated and awoke something to me. I felt like I just had to say that because it was it was coming together for me even, like no, just letting yeah. those. You didn't take me off course at all. Um, I agree with you. I think that there's, um, so my husband, Michael, makes these playlists that he'll make playlists that are like 40 hours long. Shout out to Michael and his long playlist, by the way. Hey, Michael. Yeah, yeah shout out <laughs> to Michael. He's, um, he's the best. So, but he makes these really long playlists, right? And it's like, I also really enjoy making playlists and we have extremely different approaches. I'm like, this is not fun. Why would you want to listen to this? Because he'll make a playlist and then, and it's like full albums on the playlist, right? Or the playlist might be like, it depends on the playlist. I don't need to go into all the details about it, but <laughs> they'll be extremely long and they'll tell some narrative. So it'll be some kind of story or um, educational pursuit or something that he's telling through this playlist and the songs and the lyrics and everything and then he starts listening to it and then he keeps listening to it regardless of his mood or the weather or the vibe right like and so he'll be like in this um period of like death metal that spans like two weeks of his commutes like when he used to commute before the pandemic um that he clearly doesn't feel like you're not going to be in the mood to listen to that same thing all that time. And he just listens to it anyway. And I'm like, why do you do this? That doesn't sound fun. Just listen to something else. Um, but he has this like faith that if he makes it through, there's some lesson to be revealed in it. Um, and I actually, that's why he does it. Yeah. Like he's like, no, I need to like, it's like a don't quit before the miracle happens type thing. Like, I don't know what I don't know why he makes them. He'll just get inspired to make one, but then it's like he's committed to it because there's some kind of like lesson, like some type of inspiration and lesson that he thinks will come through. And um, I actually I should get I should give him credit for this in actual life because I don't think I've told him this before. Usually I just um, like tease him about it, but I actually think about that practice <laughs> kind of frequently. Um, and I feel like that about this, this topic of like integrating these different things of my life. I feel like um, there's something big there that if I can do that, um, something will reveal itself. But I don't know what, but like there's something, there's something there to pursue. Mm. 
that's also essentially the story of my treadlock journey. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I, I do you know I want to double click on that for the for the people listening in, but I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna forgo that. That's to, it. To that's go the story. One day I stopped oh. brushing my hair, and I a lot of days I'm like, why am I doing this? This doesn't even look very good. But I think it's getting to something. <laughs> I see. I see. I did not see that I think coming. There's a spiritual lesson there somewhere. <laughs> I'm just waiting until I get it. Oh. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna let that simmer actually, because that's probably more powerful than I'm realizing. Probably when I, we go back and wash up. I'm listening to you, and I'm thinking about business because yeah. that's where my mind goes a lot of times. Sure. And we have conversations about business. And we have conversations about life. And I know that you are a creator. And I know that nobody taught you that. But I know that you kind of refined that skill at you know, Baltimore School for the Arts, you know, where you went to high school, same school that Tupac went to and Jada Pinkett Smith, for the yeah, record. To BSA. <laughs> um, I think about you in that lens, you know, as a creator, as an artist, somebody who creates from nothing and inspiration, how does that meld with kind of the rough and tumble, very tactile world of entrepreneurship, day-to-day, -day gritty building? How do you merge those worlds? Are they different worlds? Are they one and the same? How do you see it? And then let me, sorry, let me just preface that with one thing. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm not trying to be the producer all up in the video, but Classic. I, <laughs> when I, when I when I think about entrepreneurship in, in, in my journey, I, yeah. I like I'm a, I'm a big music fan. And like I told you this before, like building companies to me is like building or creating albums. Yeah, it's like you get the right soundtrack, the right people around the table, the right production, the right lighting, everything. It's the, and I'm the director. I'm the, produ the executive producer. Yeah, that's my lens. What about for you? Yeah, same, same. I mean, I think it's all very creative. It's it's different, like, obviously. Um, but every media is different, like making visual art is different than writing poetry, um, but is different than giving birth. But it all kind of that energy of, like you said, create. I was just talking about this with Michael the other day on a walk, that even like creation might be in some ways a misnomer because sometimes it feels almost like discovery or like change mm. like something that has its own life that wants to come out um but that might be cheesy but um no no i, I just found myself get. saying that in the thumbnail and i was like that's so cheesy but <laughs> um, <laughs> um but it's the same energy like it all comes from the same place this like productive energy as opposed to like receptive energy like it all comes from the same place um and especially when like it's it's great when you like I had some of that experience in like my prior career when I was doing um especially when I stepped into the role of like doing legal project management I got to do that a lot and I really love problem solving um and and it felt kind of creative like problem solving is creative to me um but especially when you have your own business, you really get to just, like, it's not, it's like I'm building a business and I'm also contributing to um, the future that I want to create. Like, it's not just a business. It's like, I have an opportunity to um, explore ways that I can do, um, like, make a business that supports my family and also brings, like, healing and pleasure to my community and to me and also does that in a way that is anti-capitalist and not um exploitive like I get to do all of those things I get to like um create this little microcosm of the like anti-capitalist thriving black future that I hope that we have someday i I really love the way you describe the opportunity that a business provides anybody really, but especially a creator to create their own sphere, their own world is what you yeah. said. Essentially. Yeah. 
I think that's beautiful. And that's like, that's, I think when you look at business that way, instead of like a hard nose, zero sum type of thing for accountants and MBAs, yeah, uh, <laughs> it changes what it can be. It's for everybody. Like, the, you know, it's for everybody. Well, and I mean, I'm not, okay. So I won't go on about this too long. Cause I, I know that we're at the end of our, like we're at the end of our time. So this will be like <laughs> the last thing I say, but it kind of does tie back into the thing you asked me earlier about um you're not like the type of person who's into this type of stuff right and I don't look like the type of person who's into like business um but it kind of does make you see people differently like maybe those MBAs are actually and I mean you know this they like it really takes a dreamer to be an entrepreneur and um like in this idea of like co-creating this future that we all want to see um we need all of those skill sets so um yeah <laughs> so i'll reveal a little bit about myself here in an effort to learn a little bit about more about you and hopefully have you share this part of yourself with everybody else <sighs> I think that business and entrepreneurship, we've like fetishized this idea of being an overnight success in business and entrepreneurship and tech, whatever, is this thing to strive for. And I truly believe it's, it's, it's empty as a pursuit in and of itself, right? Mm -hmm. It's, it's it just, just to get to that destination, whatever that is, to be the iconoclast, the, the business, the founder is pointless, I think. Personal. What, what I do think is valuable is the self-discovery along the way uh, to whatever the right destination is for you. And when I look at you and I think about your business, I wonder about it, right? I know that there are 16 million women across America that give birth each year. And I know that, you know, this is a, a highly profitable industry, but it strikes me that, you know, given just even your description of your, your mission and what you're after, your, your purpose is something different than you know, capital accumulation, so to speak. Yeah. What are you after? Why are you building a business? I guess because I just wanted to do the work that I want to do and that I feel is important. And I, first of all, I don't think you'll find many doulas and birth workers who are in it to get rich. Um, and it's probably not the career to choose if you are like, like there are much more direct paths to making money right like especially if you don't care even about loving what you do because it's like you're up in the night you're on call all the time like it's just not um but I mean I think I would have been happy to do this work working for somebody like if I if somebody had offered me a job as a birth worker and I do work with an agency like with a team um especially if they like I, I would have been happy to do that I would have been happy to be doing that work but doing it um with my own business just has this added opportunity of um, doing it in the way that I want. So it's like right off the bat, I'm like, and it's so refreshing coming from like a law firm structure, um, which is just unapologetically exploitive. And like, I mean, I don't know. Sometimes I'm like, why do pyramid schemes get such a bad rap? Like capitalism is a pyramid scheme. Like do people, like, law firms are pyramid like there's so many pyramid schemes I don't understand why there's this like one specific time like kind that um is like now all of a sudden we frown upon it but I have yeah like I have <laughs> not that I'm like oh no like pyramid schemes are great like those should be cool but I'm just like <laughs> we could examine like some of these other pyramid structures that we have um, where the setup is that, like, there are people below you with less autonomy, um, doing 
working longer hours and making less money. Like that's, you know, kind of a red flag. So I have the opportunity to um, build a business where I don't have to do that, you know? Mm. And um, that could be just me making products that people value and want. And so they're just paying me directly for the services or um, maybe someday I'll have a collective where we figure out, you know, there has to be like humility and how we communicate um, and nobody is able to have that control that they want and nobody is able to like, um, like profit off of somebody else's labor. But um, we live in a time with technology kind of is this double-edged sword, but there are ways to have like more of a passive um income without that like passive without it being like oh it's passive because somebody else is working and i'm just like taking the profits <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah you said a, you said a whole lot there um so i'm not even gonna i'm not even i'm not gonna i'm not gonna volley say that for part two season two <laughs> <laughs> but what i am gonna ask is this pan because I, I leave most conversations with you feeling like, wow, that's that's somebody who's done the work and is doing the work and is thoughtful and has a more objective understanding of self in the world than most people I come across. That's always my impression after conversations. Thank you. You're welcome. And I guess... What I want to know is for somebody who comes across that way to me, yeah. what is it that you are scared to death? Of? What makes oh, you God. feel like you don't have it all together today? Hmm. Well, I've really been working a lot on perfectionism. And hmm. I think that that goes really deep for me. Here's where I'll mention the other of my big three in my astrology, Virgo Moon. So again, <laughs> you know, um, but I always, I always say like our strengths are also our weaknesses. I'm sure you've heard me say that like many times as we've just known each other. I say it a lot, but so the flip side of being like very self-aware and like observant of things is like being endlessly critical of myself and everyone around me. I try not mm. to be so much around, of everyone around me, but it's, it's hard to like, um, not analyze everything to death. Um, so something that scares me that I'm practicing getting more comfortable with, and it's something that I love about birth work is that the work that I lead parents through is the same work that I need. And being a healer in general, like you're kind of called toward, I am, and I think a lot of people are called to do healing that you yourself present tense need mm. not just like i needed this and now i'm healed and now i'm healing others it's like i'm healing myself i'm healing you at the same time um or helping you heal yourself um but so being comfortable with not knowing things not being good at things not having the answer very uncomfortable for me mm. very uncomfortable for me as you can imagine parenting really pushes that button every day because ever know what the hell you're doing um like it's just every day like I'm just guessing over here um oh. <laughs> so that's something that scares me there's lots of things that scare me death scares me um lack of control in general like um not being able to um protect people that I love. Again, birth work brings that up. Like it's something that it's a constant thing to remember that like I'm here to hold space for them and their journey, birth work and parenting, right? Like I'm here to hold space for them and their journey. I'm here to support them um, and maybe give them tools to help it be easier. I can't do it for them. I can't protect them from pain. Um, and I can't control the outcome. Mm. So those are things that scare me. And this is a business that is just like, unlike my other job, which was very much like, oh, these are things that are comfortable for you and that you're good at. Cool. Do more of that. This is like, oh, these th are things that are not comfortable for you that you're not that great at. 
that's the whole job. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy. Yeah. But yeah. It's great. It pushes so much growth. Well, you're wearing it well. And it's no mystery to me that your business is growing the way it is. And, you know, I, I hope to see it continue to grow in Baltimore and beyond. I know, unlike me, you're not obsessed with scaling businesses and, you know, more, it's more like you described. Don't get me wrong. I mean, like I would, I really do want to have an impact on my community. I want to have like a stable life for me and my family and be able to like comfortably take vacations, like without being like, uh, can we miss out on this income? Like, um, I want to make an impact. I want to change the world. Like I want to scale in that way. Like I want to change the world. Um, so yeah, I don't know how that but where you, it sounds like you're, you're measuring it all on something different than traditional bottom line mm. uh, dollars and dollars and cents. Not just. Like I'm saying this to the universe right now. Like if I if if doing that makes me like rich, also like I'm open to that universe. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to ruin that by adding one more word. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Pam. I know I would recommend you, uh, you know, this is nepotism aside, I would recommend you as somebody uh, to partner with as you prepare for, for having a child, whether it's your first time or your second time around. I was awoke, awakened to things that I just didn't think about. And I had, you know, unnecessary walls kind of melted away from me, thinking about life and uh, bringing somebody into, the, into, into this world uh, by doing the work with you. And I, we really, really appreciate it. And we're so grateful for for you. Um, how do people who are interested in what you do and the business you're building and just kind of you as a founder and business builder and world changer, how do they get in touch with you and learn more about you and your projects? So, um, first of all, yeah, thanks. That means a lot to me. Um, you can find me at cosmicrootbirth.com. That's my website. Um, I'm also on Instagram at Cosmic Root Birth and on Facebook, Cosmic Root Birth. <laughs> um, but people can find me in any of those places. The website's probably the a good first stop. And if people want to like keep in touch, um, Instagram is where I'm the most active. And I love talking to people. This is something that like, I mean, we just talked about this for a long time. I can talk and talk and talk about it. So um, I'm, I'm always happy to connect with people. We'll have uh, we'll of course, if you're pregnant or um, trying to conceive or whatever, like definitely I would, it's, it's really an honor to participate in such a big, um, important experience in somebody's life. And we'll, we'll have your, you know, your details in, in the show notes. And uh, Pam, I just really, really appreciate this conversation and um, this time. Thanks thanks for doing this and thanks for representing, uh, I think, a different kind of founder than we've had to date. Um, and uh, the message really resonated with me and I think it will with other people as well. Thank you, Tanji. I really appreciate it. Um, thanks for having me. All right. Uh, I'll see you soon. I know that. <laughs> yeah probably like <laughs> <laughs> all right later pal bye